Hello again there friends and fans, Raptor here, and welcome back to the tutorial for Valheim, an incredible Viking life simulator and builder available now via Steam. What do you do in this game after you build your initial little setup, your initial village? What should you start doing in the game? Well, I'm going to show you here today how to unlock the bronze axe, how to start gathering wood, and how to start building a forge. There's a lot to learn, so stick with me, and don't worry if you have any questions, just comment down below, and we'll try to answer them as best as possible. Once you get your flint axe, by the way, you'll need to uh, go down to a water source somewhere near your initial starting point. You'll have to find a coastline such as this, and you'll look for something known as flint. It looks like long, white little rocks that you'll be able to bring back, and you can get an advanced axe that way. You can have a stone axe, or you can get a more advanced axe that way, which will cut down more trees, and it'll do it better. You'll need to start cutting down trees such as these fir here, or start cutting down uh, regular beechwood trees such as these here. Once you've gathered a lot of wood, you'll then need to move on to gathering fine wood, and which can be found by cutting down any sort of birch tree. You'll kind of know it when you see it if you know what a birch tree looks like, a tall white tree that you can cut down and receive fine wood from. Once you have that, then you'll be able to start cutting down pine trees from an area known as the Dark Forest, which kind of looks like this. You'll see a dark forested area where the ground actually kind of changes color. Keep in mind that there's enemies in there such as trolls and, and whatnot, so you'll kind of have to stay away for a while until you're ready. Once you have all of that stuff ready to go, you should be able to craft things like the fine wood bow, as you can see here in slot number three. And you should be able to craft that with a few materials that you may have gotten after completing the fight with the first boss. So you'll have plenty of materials here. You'll have wood, you'll have core wood, and you'll have fine wood, which you can then use to craft your bow. So if we take a look at the workbench, we can then see here at uh, fine wood bow, you'll have your uh, level two workbench, uh, or level one in order to craft it. Fine wood bow, which again, that's from... Uh, the fine wood you get from birch trees, core wood, which you should have from pine trees, and deer hides. Now keep in mind, pine trees are long and tall and skinny, which are different than the fir trees. So keep that in mind that there's a two uh, little difference between those, which is pretty important. The fir trees should give you regular wood, which is always useful. Always bring that back. And you should have deer hides by now by kind of following the quests. Once you uh, start to uh, explore the dark wood area, you should find tin which of course looks like shiny little rocks near the water, just like flint. And you'll also need to find copper, which you'll need to find by going to those locations as well. So make sure that you find all that stuff. Here you should be able to bring that back, copper ore. And of course, once you smelt it down, then it'll look like copper. It'll be the same with tin. Once you smelt down tin, then you should be able to put it in your smelter. Now, how do you build the smelter, you ask it? That is a very good question. On the map, there's burial sites that you'll need to go to in order to get something called a saltering and we'll run there now and see if we can explore and find one of those and I'll show you where they are and eventually what they look like. They look like a red cube that you can find that's standing on uh, little pillars like torches and you should be able to find those that way. There's many different ways to do it. We're going to have ourselves a little snack here before we leave. So keep in mind that there's quite a few things to find and uh, quite a few areas to find them in. We've been using our materials and they're spread all across the map and so a lot of you may have been watching that via the live stream. So if you're watching now and haven't yet subscribed and turn on the notification bell, make sure you do so you don't miss out on any times that we go to these uh, locations. I'm going to go into the dark wood now and show you what that looks like and what enemies you may find there. It is a good idea to at least bring a crude bow with you or a fine wood bow to keep them at bay. And you can start with a basic spear, for example, a flint spear to keep them at bay as well. A shield is useful and you can block with that too. And it looks like we've just increased our running skill yet again. So... As we approach this next area, we're going to find something called the uh, Burial Chamber, which is just to our left where the dark wood is, and I'll show you what that looks like. Now, you'll only find these in the dark wood areas. Sometimes they're right on the edge, and we got lucky when we found this one. This one will be empty, but keep in mind it will be filled with skeletons, so make sure you ready yourself to block by right-clicking. I don't know if he wants to attack me. There he goes. Uh, so you should find those druid-type creatures around. Oh, and there's a troll. Hello, sir. Watch out for these guys, especially if they have a yeah, giant uh, log with them. You'll need to watch out. Okay, let's go inside the burial chamber. So inside the burial chambers, you will be looking for... Oh, looks like this one's kind of respawned with mushrooms. Great. These are helpful for eating inside. Looks like I didn't bring a torch with me, but... Basically, what you're looking for is to get to the back of the room where you'll find little torches and such. You see a chest here. There could be little pillars around and you'll notice a red floating cube. You grab that cube, you'll need five of them to build the charcoal kiln, and you'll need five of them to build your smelter. Both are very important. If you only find five, you can then first build your uh, 
you can go ahead and build your charcoal kiln first. And then once you have enough charcoal stored up, you can then build your smelter. So you'll have to find all your materials and bring them back. Let's go ahead and run because we're being chased by a troll right now. We'll have to kind of lose him. You'll want to bring him back to base. Let's see if we can get all the way back to base and lose this nerd. We're going to go up this way. Oh, hello. Oh, he's a fast one, isn't he? Looks like he's knocking down trees on his way. All right, we should be back home shortly. I'm just going to go through the meadows here just to see if we can lose them. Now, also, another tip is that there is a uh, large... Uh, these circles of stone could have items hidden in them, so when you get your pickaxe, you can actually dig down. And so, again, that's another good tip, too. So that's why it's always good to watch these videos, because we'll go through kind of every single thing that we can. Now, again, for those of you having tips below on where to find things like iron, where to find dark metal, or anything else, make sure you share anything that you've found in the game down below. I highly encourage everyone to just drop any info you may have, so that way we can have ourselves a good time. So once you bring back all of your materials, you should have copper and tin and those cores with you. You should be able to make it. It just takes about 20 stone to make the kiln and five of those cores. Now again, this is at the current moment. They may patch this out. The game is in early access, so the recipes and the frequency of finding those may change. So keep in mind it's a good backup plan to do that. Let's jump over here real quick. So when you put these down, again, this is what they'll look like. And uh, they're quite large. You can have a few options in storing uh, the materials that you'll need to smelt, or rather to burn all the... Uh, burn all the, the lumber, uh, just burn regular wood in here, and you can go right up to the door and you can put charcoal in there. Additionally, you can also build like 50 stacks. If we had 50 wood on us, we could build a wood stack here and just store it outside. But basically what you'll need to do is just go up to each kiln, and in this case we have one, and you can add 25 to that, and it's a one-to-one -one burn ratio. One wood will equal one charcoal or one coal. So once you have all of that stacked up, you can go over to your uh, over to your smelter. Now keep in mind if you build a building for this you'll need to have some ventilation for it too. So make sure that you build like a little chimney there for all the smoke to go out. This game actually has smoke mechanics. So when you build your house make sure you have a good way to vent all of the uh, fumes from the fires. The smelter is not too bad in terms of fumes but it uh, and it, you'll just need to build a roof around it. Good, good building to build inside. Coal goes in on the right side and then the material that you want to smelt goes in on the left side up to 10. So if we were to take coal, or rather, uh, copper in here, we can go ahead and put it inside the smelter. And after a few minutes, things will pop out here. Now, you'll need a forge nearby, and you can also eventually build things like the cooler and the anvil, which you can find in the menu at the forge, and you can see exactly what you'll need to build that kind of stuff. You can also build it, I think, uh, at, the, uh, at the workbench, too. So keep in mind that you'll need to look for stars in order to upgrade things. So, for example, here at the workbench, uh, if we wanted to build the... Uh, let's see if there's any of these things here. Um, if we wanted to build anything, it might be under the upgrade tab. Can't quite remember where to find some of these things. Maybe it's just because we've already built them. But you'll need, basically you need materials in order to build upgrades in order to get more. So if we had bronze on us, we should be able to make more uh, recipes. Actually, I remember now. It's via the hammer. So once you're ready, you should be able to put it down under uh, crafting. Yes, this is where you'll be able to get the things for upgrades. So you'll be able to put the anvil, for example, the uh, forge cooler, and you'll kind of see what it does. It says a workbench improvement or a forge improvement. So, for example, the forge cooler is for the forge to unlock new recipes, and the workbench uh, chopping block gives you a higher level uh, workbench that way. So right now you can see that our forge is currently up to level 3, and adding more things to it and discovering more metals will increase that. And the same with the workbench. You can actually, If you look at the... Uh, item too, you can kind of see some sparkles going towards what it upgrades. And so you can see here now we've got a level 2 workbench. If I put a chopping block, it can be a level 3 workbench and so on and so forth. And also a tanning uh, rack will also unlock that. I think I had some behind the house. Maybe they were destroyed, but it should be a little higher level, which then allows us to get uh, higher upgrades. For example, if you wanted to bring your uh, bow and arrow here, if you wanted to upgrade your fine wood bow, you could click on upgrade. And then you'll just need basically the same materials to upgrade it again and again. So the quality will increase uh, the resistance to damage, a.k.a. Uh, durability, and also will increase its damage as well. And a few other perks based on the weapon or the tool that you're trying to use. One thing that we found out is the bronze axe is probably the first thing you want to make out of bronze, which is required 
I believe, five bronze to make that. Let's check to be sure. It might actually be eight. Uh, it's four bronze. Great. So it requires one leather scrap, which you can get from the boars, and four bronze, which will then require... Let's do the math on this one. It could change, so keep in mind. So it's two copper and one tin per bronze, and then you'll need to be able to make uh, four of those in order to craft that, or whatever the recipe may be. So then, once you have the axe, keep in mind the axe is also used as a weapon, and is quite good, too, against some of the enemies that are uh, wood-based. So you can see here that the slash damage on that is 35, block power of 10, and also has a uh, movement speed reduction to it. Uh, but the knockback is a really good thing to keep in mind on this one. You can knock enemies back as you attack. Now this is great. It doesn't have as high durability because if you're using it to cut down trees and to fight enemies, it, its durability is going to go down quick. But keep in mind too that this is a level 1 axe versus uh, a level 2 hammer here, which again you can upgrade by the workbench or the forge and of course the bigger the better the more upgrades you have the better and that'll make for a, a better situation overall so here we made a blacksmith you don't have to do it indoors if you don't want to looks like uh, whatever we had out back was attacked so we should have a higher level workbench so here I think we should have a level four workbench if we put our tanning rack and the wood chopping block out back but it could be somewhere else maybe it's by my house I'm not sure enemies sometimes attack so make sure you put a little fence around it and build it close to your workbench so that way you can see uh, how close it needs to be. So for example here you can see the, all the overlapping dotted lines of all the workbenches nearby. So I could craft for example the uh, chopping block out, bl uh, out back with the uh, 10 flint or we could do uh, the tanning booth with more as well. The little tanning rack I should say. Cool. Lots of information so far. So let's go check on our copper. It does take quite some time to do this, too. So if you're playing with a friend, which, by the way, you can play up to 10 friends, make sure you have somebody babysitting the forge all the time. It is quite a big job, but you should be able to get everything done over a little bit of time. So we'll go ahead and drop this stack. If you want to if you want to split stacks, hold shift. If you want to transport a whole thing, all you got to do is hit control. They stack to 30, so that's great. We'll need to then craft bronze on the forge. So keep that in mind. We could do it by five or by one or by five. So just keep that in mind that you do that there. Now, once you have iron, it might take... Uh, we haven't gotten to that point yet, but it might take multiple materials. The uh, thought is maybe it'll only take one because it is just iron. But perhaps eventually we can make steel. So, uh, again, we'll need to take these 30 and uh, take... Uh, you know, it's two to one. So we'll have to take... Uh, if we wanted to make enough for an axe, we'll have to get some more tin for that. But there you go. Pretty good stuff here. And we'll add some more to the smelter over time. A good thing to do, though, to smelt up all of our materials. Ah, you can see all the trophies and things that we're unlocking, too. You can see where we're at. We're very advanced, but this is a very good way to start on day two. And uh, things to look forward to. So once you've uh, discovered the meadows, and once you have a little bit of progress, make sure you make your way into the dark forest and start finding things like that. If you're looking for beehives, I'm going to try to give some more tips as quickly as I can. Beehives are basically found by destroying... Uh, little uh, beehives inside, or actually these are beekeeping houses, or, well, they're little, they're little beekeepers, right? So these can be found by breaking beehives inside of abandoned buildings. You should get a queen bee from that, and then it takes ten wood, plus the queen, and then you have yourself a beehive. This stacks up to four, and then you should be able to harvest all of these. These uh, can produce four honey, so you can harvest these every so often. And then that can be used to make mead. So if you're eating your blueberries that you might find in the dark forest, and if you're eating your raspberries, which you can find in the meadow, then you want to save those. For the very start, try to only eat meat and mushrooms and uh, maybe occasional berries, but not recommended. Also, the little creatures that you might find near the water that look like lizards, those are called necks, and you should be able to get tails from them. If you eat meat and the tail at the same time, it gives you an incredible amount of uh, boost, so it's really good for fight, uh, fighting higher level enemies. We're going to go back into the house and store some of that coal again. You'll always need coal, so any extra wood, make sure you turn it into fuel. It's a great way to store things to continue to produce uh, weapons and such. We've got another 25 here, so that's good. Always a great idea to try to keep at least maybe 100 in storage, and then you can focus on other tasks while you burn through it. Very cool. Now, another thing that you can do eventually is when you find those saltering cores or whatever it may be called, the red cubes, basically. You can build teleporters eventually. So keep that in mind that you can uh, name them this way. So if you want to teleport to a boss, you can see here we have a teleporter at our base, and we have a teleporter all the way down here. So very easily, we can transport ourselves from here to a base camp, and uh, you will not be able to teleport with copper or any sort of material that has an X up here in the corner. No ore and no smelted metals, no ingots. So if you think you're going to uh, build a teleporter in the middle of the dark forest and cheese your way back to your base, 
Unfortunately, they're a little smarter than that, so I just wanted to show that you're not able to do that just yet. There might be an item. Maybe there's a way around it, but we, we don't know everything just yet. But I'd like to show you what's possible later in the game, and I want to show off that I'm very proud of my group of friends, both Booster, Alex Derange, and Flippers, for helping me out very soon. If they're watching this video, I'd encourage them to comment down below, so that way you can go see their bases. These teleporters, by the way, are a great thing to build after you've built a boat. And a boat is uh, very important and will allow you to go to these distant lands to make even bigger bases. Check this out. We built a moat around our base. It's not finished. Always working on it. Some of the things you may see here are much later in level, but when you get to it, then you can build yourself a giant uh, base with lots of defenses. And we'll go down and check out the boat here. Now, once you've... Uh, created a lot of brass you can then create armor from that brass too so keep in mind right now i'm wearing uh, bronze plate leggings plate curious and a helmet and those of course will allow you to uh, get yourself to distant lands and be able to fight those enemies and you can upgrade your armor too now when you're building the boat like this you'll need a hammer and you can then craft the boat under the miscellaneous tab the boat then requires, the level 1 boat, will require a few different things. As you, at the bottom you see 30 fine wood, 10 deer hide, 20 resin, bronze nails times 80, which you can make 20 per 1 bronze ingot right now. So you'll need to make a few bronze ingots, then you'll have to craft those into bronze nails, and then you can plop that down. Now this is the level 2 boat, a little bit better than the raft, and this is good for a group of friends, because also you can store stuff inside the storage box, so, for example, if you wanted to bring back a bunch of iron ore or copper or tin, you can store that and then bring it back to your base, which is a really, really good thing to do. You'll need to practice uh, driving. Uh, the boat, the boat's uh, it's pretty good. It, you can stand like this and look all cool, right? You, you know, you go on your Viking raids and you jump out of the boat and you go attack the enemy. It's pretty cool stuff. But the boat is a very, very useful thing, so make sure you keep that in mind, too. Additionally, if you're looking for troll armor, the troll that we uh, ran away from earlier... If you kill enough of them, you get five troll hides per kill of troll. And if you want to make a full troll armor set, you'll need four pieces for the set. So you'll need, uh, I don't have it on me at the moment, but just keep in mind that you'll need, uh, you'll need a, uh, basically a hood. You'll need to craft that, uh, a tunic and some pants and then a cloak as well. And with that, you'll get a bonus for stealth, which is really good if you're going to go hunting deer. And then you can get all the deer hide that you need to craft uh, some of your advanced weapons or, of course, your boat if you need 10 for that. Not cheap, but pretty relatively easy to gather. It just takes a little bit of time to do so. Another good thing to note is that you, you need to learn how to work those gate doors. Now, another thing to note is if you are near a campfire at your base, you get rested bonuses up in the corner. So after you, by the way, keep in mind you can stack the uh, cooking stations times four or more to cook up all of your meat. So what I would recommend is going to get a bunch of deer, bring it back to your cooking station, and then you can get all your uh, health and stuff up from here. Every time you return to a fire, and every time you have like a roof over your head, and every time that you have a bed nearby, you increase your comfort level, which then increases your ability to heal. Now right now we're really relatively low because I'm not eating, because I'm just kind of showing you around. But you can bring your honeycomb with you, and then you can bring your meat with you, and uh, maybe some mushrooms, and with three different types of food, you see our maximum health go up. That's a great way to get through those burial pits in the dark forest. And uh, you'll need to also find troll caves too. Those have trolls inside of them and a few materials, just things like uh, wood and stone. Maybe you can find fine wood there too, but just go ahead and check them out near you. And remember, you can mark your map too by double clicking. You have different symbols on the right side. So if you want to label new things, you can put those on the map. You can mark a boss, a base, an outpost that you may have, any sort of point of interest, maybe a portal. Like that, for example, you can mark where all of your stuff goes. Keep track of it however you want, and you can uh, go ahead and uh, type custom labels down below, too. So if you wanted to say you are here, you can mark, you know, there and let yourself know that I've been here, here, and here. As you can see, we've been marking burial sites and other towers and uh, where bosses are. And uh, the second boss you want to be looking for, by the way, is called the Elder. When you're inside those burial sites, you might find ruins, which are the uh, little stone markers with red text on them and if you go and read some of those ruins the game will eventually mark your next location as uh, the next enemy and it also might mark the first enemy too it might be marked by default so that's where you'll need to go now it seems like to me that the area you spawn in in this game is the dead center of the entire map and the further you go northeast south or west or any direction in between 
The further away from the center of the, of the world you go, the more difficult things will become. So wherever you've spawned, if you start heading in one direction for a long time, you'll eventually find a dark forest. You'll probably find a meadow right away. There's other biomes such as the, um, the swamp down here, Swamp of Death. Very dangerous. If you are in a dark forest and you find a swamp, stay away from it until you've defeated the second boss. There's also another biome type called the Plains. If you see that and you've not yet dealt with the swamp, you're going to have a bad time. Stay away from the swamps and stay away from the uh, Plains until you're ready with everything being done in the dark forest and getting your bronze armor up a little bit. It'll take some time, but if you upgrade all your weapons and armor, things should be good. And you can eventually use your sultry cores on things like this and unlock all sorts of new secrets. Now, remember, as a side note, you'll also be able to make roads and paths with this game, too. So, for example, if you'd like to uh, make a pathway, you can always uh, equip your uh, hoe. You can then right-click in order to level the ground, raise the ground, or pathen. Now, you can level and make a path anywhere you'd like, but for raising the ground, you'll need to have a work uh, station nearby, a little workbench, in order to then spend four stone on raising the ground. Sometimes it's a good idea to raise the ground first and then level it out if you're trying to build a platform to... Uh, then put a building, and also in order to make a... Maybe you can make an earth bridge or something across the river if you wanted to, or dam something up and uh, do it that way. And then you can make a path that, for example, like this, leads all the way into the forest like we have. Additionally, you can use your pickaxe to dig down into the ground, too, as we mentioned earlier about those uh, stone uh, burial tombs, you know, with the, the small stones that surround in a circle, an area that you can mine. So together with the pickaxe and the uh, hoe here, you can actually work uh, the land pretty nicely. Speaking of working the land, too, you'll need to have something on you called a cultivator, and you can craft that inside of the, um, once you've got your blacksmith up again, the bronze is incredibly important. You use the bronze in order to make something called a cultivator, and I believe one of my friends has that on them right now, but basically you can make that with uh, five bronze and five wood, and that's a very important thing. For those of you wondering, how do I start planting all my seeds? I found carrot seeds in the forest, I found turnip seeds in the in the forest or in the swamp I found onions or whatever may be out there you can plant that by equipping your cultivator and doing the same with the hoe the options will be different but if for example you have uh, tree seeds on you you can plant those this way and so for example you can then uh, right click and cultivate the land so you can do that just like with the hoe just imagine that this with the cultivator and the options were just different and that it said cultivate at the bottom you can do it this way and it'll clear all the land for you and cultivate it and then all you got to do is right click and switch to whichever seed you would like for example, let's say it said birch seed, and then you wanted to plant a tree anywhere in the grass. You can do that without cultivating the land. That's how we got some of the pine trees over there, the fir trees, to be precise. And then, of course, we can start planting things here, and you can plant the seeds, pick them up, and then plant the seeds again. So there are optional ways. Just make sure you check your menu when you right-click uh, to plant everything. So, so far, you can see here we have turnips and we have carrots, and you'll be able to find more things in the game. There's also a merchant in the game that can be found in the Dark Forest, though even after all this time playing, we haven't found him just yet. So once you find him, you'll be able to spend your coins and rubies and jewels and other things that you found inside the burial chambers that you can then give to the merchant in order to get cash. You can then buy yourself a fishing rod to catch fish, and that's another great source of food, as well as the mushrooms, too, returning to the burial chambers time to time to be able to harvest those. It seems to take quite some time for them to respawn, but again, eating mushrooms and uh, meat is much better. Once you've made the uh, cauldron, by the way, the cauldron is another item that you'll want to craft. You can put that over a fire. And this, again, is where you can make uh, different types of soup, like carrot soup, for example, or frost resistance uh, mead base. Once you find the items to unlock that, there's different recipes that you can craft and unlock. For example, sausages. And then you can uh, craft those here. Then once you've uh, crafted, like, let's say you wanted to make a mead base... The mead actually gives you a 300% increase in stamina. So if you are going to do a big busy day with your friends where you're going to be cutting down a lot of trees, one thing you can do is uh, drink the mead. It'll give you then a bigger boost on your stamina. So your bar will refill faster. So you can eat a bunch of food to make the bar larger, the yellow bar at the bottom. And then if you're uh, low on stamina, you can drink the mead. And it'll give you a few second boost so you can go into turbo mode on cutting down a bunch of trees in succession and then going, going and bringing back all the stuff. So a good idea. So anyway, the fermenter, right. So you bring your mead base from your cauldron over to your uh, fermenter, and then you can put it in there and then have it finish up. And then out comes, uh, for example, tasty mead. So there's your mead there, and then you can right-click on it. I don't want to use it just yet, but as you can see, it lowers your health, regeneration, and stamina by 
But it increases your stamina regeneration by 300%. There's a potion or a, a mead that does it in the opposite sense. So again, that is why you want to keep all of your raspberries and berries, blueberries that is, anything that you find berry-wise, make sure you bring to uh, whoever's going to cook it and start turning it into a mead because you can really just live off of meat and mushrooms and carrots and things like that from the farm. So berries, try not to eat them. They're very important not to do so. And we can just check, check all the recipes here. For example, if you wanted a healing uh, healing potion or whatever, that a mead that needs to be uh, for healing, you use your blood bag, honey, raspberries, and dandelions too. I didn't actually know you could pick up dandelions, so of course the little yellow flower that you find pretty much anywhere in the map, mostly in the meadows, you can go ahead and pick those up. And uh, probably about a stack of 20 or so of those. Just pick them up whenever you can and just throw them into a box. And, uh, of course, our storage is kind of unorganized, but uh, overall you can kind of find out where things are and eventually uh, craft bigger boxes. But, again, we're playing with many other people, and sometimes they just dump their inventory. So try to stay as organized as possible. One good tactic here is to build chests on top of each other by putting down a, a small shelf. You can do that in the uh, crafting tab here under your hammer in order to make a small wooden floor, and you can just basically put that into the sides of your walls. So a lot of people were saying to build a bigger house, but I've actually been able to quite fit quite a few things in here without spending all my time and resources on building a larger house. I've been building vertically rather than horizontally, saving a lot of space, and you don't have to move around as much. So for example, I can craft items while I'm also collecting copper, and then I can step over here to make something. So very, very minimal movement, which increases the efficiency of crafting things before we go out in the boat. So remember, live, laugh, pillage ladies and gentlemen want to take a quick second again to thank you guys for your support and remind you to uh, smash that uh, join button to become a member if you'd like to join our dedicated servers or whatnot and also to invite you to our live streams to come say hello and ask more questions and more importantly jump on the discord there are some real big pros on there and there's wiki pages coming around but not everybody knows everything yet and it's great to explore in this game and to discover it on your own being hinted in the right direction uh, for the second boss, make sure you bring fire arrows. For the first boss, make sure you bring regular uh, flint arrows. There's just so many tips that I can keep on giving. So if you played this game or if you've seen somebody else, give me three quick hints down below, and I would love to incorporate that into my gameplay, and I'm sure others uh, will as well. We are just out of time for today, so I want to thank everyone for dropping in again and showing just so much love and support to this game and my uh, stream and my channel too. This is a great game. I didn't know if I'd enjoy this more than just playing it a few times, but I'm just in love with the uh, what's going on in our world, and I just love it. If you want this seed, remember it is 8675309. That is no joke. That is literally the seed that I put in for this one. So if you wanted to explore the map or whatnot, take a quick screenshot. I'll scroll across the map one more time and uh, just kind of show you all the places that we found, such as the Plains of Anguish or the Swamp of Death. Great places indeed. Come visit them sometime. There's a great brochure, the Strait of Baguette, and the docks and such. All right. You guys have been amazing. Thanks again for all the support. I hope you have a great afternoon, good evening, and good night. And thank you very much for joining me for yet another tutorial video on Volheim. More of your questions and more of your uh, responses on the live streams. We'll make more videos, and that's a great thing to do. <laughs> Booster's giant home, lol. Looks like a World War One tank. Take care. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for being the best audience on YouTube, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody. We'll see you soon.